Good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to show you from start to finish how to create your own VTuber. In this tutorial, you will need a drawing program. I'm using Paint Tool Sci and Live 2D Cubism to rig your model. Before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Kay. Uh, I play games, stream, and draw on this channel. And uh, that's all there is to it. So let's get over to the tutorial. All right, here you go. So this is Paint Tool Sci. It is available as a free trial, but also you can probably find a free version floating around the internet somewhere. Any art program that allows you to have layers will work just fine. So that includes Photoshop, GIMP, etc. You can see over here, this is uh, the art base for the, my current model. You can see here, I have a bunch of groups and each group has a lot of layers. However, today I will be creating a completely new model. So I'm just going to give you a small walkthrough how many layers my K model was. Reminder, she is only a bust model. She doesn't ha even have legs. So, for on top, I have my kitty cat named Misha, and Misha has six separate layers for her left and right hands, her face, her head, and her left and right ears. Though I could have compressed that because I didn't animate every single one of those layers. Next up is Kay's face. We have her flowers that feature four separate layers. The leaves are separate from the flowers themselves. We have her closed eye model. Those are two different models, just of her closed eyes. Next, we have the lashes on top. This is separate from the eye group because I wanted the lashes to be visible over her bangs. So we have the shine on the right, we have the shine on the left, we have our right eyelashes and left eyelashes. Next is her hair, or the hair that forms her bangs. Here's the wispy part of her bangs, her right, her left curl, right curl, the inner part of her bangs, <laughs> five head, side lock, other side lock. So that was six layers. All right, here's her eyebrows, left and right. Eyes, each separate eye has five layers. And these are nothing, so I'm gonna just trash these layers. So each separate eye is five different layers. Her top lid, which you can't quite see what that does. I will drag it out for you. So her top lid, which is basically her top lid. <laughs> her bottom lashes, just her bottom lashes. Her bottom lid which actually didn't get a lot of use. Her right pupil, this one's a little bit more obvious than what it does. But you can see it's behind those other layers that then you can look around without your pupil going outside your eye. And then the white part of her eye, her eye white. And it's the same for the left eye too. Next is her nose, then it's her mouth, she has a top lip, and then she has a bottom lip. As you can note, those are separate. She has teeth on the bottom and top. She has her bottom teeth, her top teeth, and her inner mouth. Next is the back of her head and the base of the face. <laughs> Where's your face, hun? And then I didn't give her human ears because you know, she has cat ears. So she has one left ear and one right ear. If you were making a more detailed model, you would separate out the front and the back of each ear to make it a more 3D effect, a more 3D effect. And then we have her clothing. I'm just gonna go through these. 
more quickly because these are more situational. You have her entire clothing, her bow is on a separate layer, and every single one of these, one of these ruffles is on a different layer. Note, I separate them out into middle, right, and left ruffles. Uh, that's because if I ever decided to move her arms, that would be necessary because those would act as like sleeves. Her body, left arm, right arm. And then have the choker as a separate layer from the neck, shoulders, and then finally the hair at the back of her head and highlights in that back hair. So yeah, I'd estimate it's around, once split up, it's going to be around 50 to 60 layers. Yeah. On the free version of Live 2D Cubism, the maximum width and height or at least the maximum resolution you're allowed to use is 2048 and so I would say like maybe so I would say you know limit yourself to 2048 as far as width and height goes for your canvas all right um, I'm going to be drawing a very simple um, egg eggy <laughs> listen to them some tunes while we do this. I ended up changing my background color to pink so then I can more easily see where I what I'm painting on. So now here I'm actually drawing the expression in more of a three quarters type of style. Typically you would want to make your V2 model face forward perfectly, just like I have K over here, or myself I guess over here, facing forward towards the camera. Because I know for Eggy, I want her to be by default facing a little bit towards the left. I drew her so that then her neutral position is actually a little bit more facing towards the left, but you would probably want to make your model face forward towards the camera. Okay, so I've drawn the default Eggy character. There's a couple more things I have to do though. I would advise that you have a separate image for your character's full blink. So for example, I think when Eggy blinks, her eyes will look about like this. There we go. That's my blink layer. <laughs> she looks like she has not does not have enough sleep. Next, what I'm going to do is separate these out all into layers I will need for live 2D rigging. So I have the legs on one layer. Typically, you would have them on two separate layers, but I don't and I don't intend for her legs to move independently of each other. So I'm going to have them be on one layer, and I'm going to rename that layer leg leggy. Next, I have her base layer. You can see that I've actually drawn the legs into the base layer. It's good to have that extension of some parts that are hidden, just because when you're rigging it later, it might be useful to have that leeway there. So this is the base, and I'm gonna call this base. Next up is her face. So this part needs to that's, this is where we start cutting. I'm going to take her mouth, I'm going to hit Control C, Control X to cut it, and Control V to paste it onto the layer on top. 
But we're not done with the mouth yet. But first, let's also cut apart her eyes. So you need one separate layer for each eye. Control X, Control V. And another layer for the other eye. And then this final layer is her eyebrow layer. Whoop. And then this layer on the bottom that's left is going to be her eyebrow layer. So I'm going to name this eyebrow. And then I'm going to name this one eye right. Note that the naming conventions are based on how you see the character. So for example, so for example, this is the right eye, even though it's technically Eggie's left eye. Eye left. Now let's go and fix up that blink layer. And I'm going to name this blink right. And name the other layer blink left. Okay. There we go. Here are our components of the face. Other components you'll probably have include ears, nose, pupils, blush, etc. I want to use a simple character for this tutorial so that then there would be less for you to digest at once. All right, notice that I actually haven't renamed the mouth layer. That's because the mouth is where it gets kind of complicated. So the mouth actually needs to be able to open and close. How I'm going to work with this, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to split the mouth right down the center. Now to smooth that out, I'm going to take my brush again, just slightly smooth out that line so that then it's less harsh. Now I've separated her out mouth out into a top part and a bottom part. On a more human V2 model, this would actually be the top lip and the bottom lip. We're going to add behind her two lips, her mouth. Which for now, her inner mouth actually, which I'm just going to mark as around this. I've left a patch of color for the tongue, but I've omitted teeth this time just because, again, she's a very simple model. Here's my completed Eggy art model. Let's export this as a Photoshop file or a .psd file and put it into Live 2D Cubism. All right, welcome back. So this is Live 2D Cubism Editor, and you can see up here I have the free version. I am not using the Pro Trial, so we're gonna go into File, Open, and we're gonna open up our Photoshop model of Eggie. All right, here she is. She's looking pretty tired, isn't she? So the first thing we have to do is give her her mesh is, meshes. So meshes are basically like triangles that you put on your artwork that allow your art do, to move or to stretch or bend or any of those things. So you'll get more, you'll see how it works better as I do this. All right, so let's first go into our right blink. I don't expect this right blink art to actually move very much, so I can just go up to here. You can see there is an automatic mesh generator. It's basically a triangle with three dots with the word auto on it. We're going to click on that, and I'm just going to choose a preset that looks about good to me, and I'll go with standard. All right, we can just keep this window up as we go. Next is blink left. Once again, I think standard looks good. You can see it's created these meshes, which are these triangles that separate that section out your art. 
Next, we'll go to our top lip. So this top lip is actually going to be a little bit tricky because this top lip will be moving a lot. So I'm going to close the automatic mesh generator because this time I want to draw the mesh myself. You can see it's already got two large triangles for me in this rectangular box. I'm not going to be using these, so I'm just going to take the eraser tool, which is located up here. It's the fifth one in the sequence of six tools and just erase what it already gave me. Now I'm going to take this pen tool, this pen with the plus, and I am going to draw a line right through her mouth like this. So the reason why I chose to draw a line through her mouth like this is because a more logical way for her for the line of action of her mouth to go. And I'm just going to make sure and then I'm going to draw another line below that. Just outlining her mouth and clicking pretty frequently to create another vertex. Connect this over here and then I'm going to draw another line above her mouth. Each one of these times I click down, it's creating a vertex, which a vertex should always be connected to form a triangle. So you see, once I've connected my drawn vertices into and edges, it's suggested to me how you should section out them with these blue lines. So I'm just going to hit auto connect because that looks about good to me and hit this check mark and that looks good. All right, we've come to the bottom lip. I'm going to do this over again, but without the talking. I left. All right, this one is going to be deforming a lot more. So I'm going to hit auto again, and I'm just going to choose deformation heavy because I'm too lazy to do this myself. And let's do that for eye right also. Next up is her base. So <laughs> this base egg, I actually plan on deforming a little bit. So I'm going to hit auto, deformation, what happens when I hit heavy? Well, as you can see, I didn't clean up my art very well. <laughs> There's like some barely visible brush strokes up here that the mesh has to, is including. I go into the pen tool and if I take the eraser tool and just erase these vertices over here, my computer is chugging on this those straggling bits will not be seen. Gotta make sure this area is connected. Stragglers. Goodbye, stragglers. Alright. Good enough for me. Just a little bit messy. Then leggy, again, don't expect this one to deform very much. Deformation little. Okay. So that was step one, is to put meshes on all of your textures. Next up is, I guess, to start moving this. So here comes the more complicated part. We have something called parameters, which I'm going to go ahead. So see this middle panel down here called parameters? This is where the magic happens. I'm going to start, I'm just going to start doing this because it's hard to explain this. Follow along this if you just explain it with only words. You gotta see it to believe it. So a couple things. Um, I'm just going to take these. Angle X, Y, and Z refers to the head angles. So I'm going to take these. Um, hit the right arrow, right click, and select create folder. Rename that folder head. This is just so then it's easier on me. These parameters are automatically created for you. Head. And then create another folder. Eyes. Eyes. 
We're just going to be working with the default parameters today. Eggy doesn't have any hair, but I'll still create a folder for that, I guess. <laughs> Cursed hairy Eggy. All right. So here are all my nicely labeled parameters. We're going to be working with just the default parameters today. Makes it easier on me. <laughs> okay. So let's start with one of the most basic things. Blinks. I'm gonna, for now, you can see this is a texture inspector, or this is where your, so this is where your parts are up here. And this is where your deformers are. They're not the exact same thing, but when you open, when you start up and you just open it up, it's almost like they're exact same thing. So I'm going to click these eyeballs to hide blink left and blink right. I'm going to work on making Eggy blink now. How are you going to do that? So I'm going to either select her left eye by either hovering over and selecting it, or I can go into the inspector here and select it. So I have my eye left. And for now... So I have this eye selected, right? But before I do any moving on this eye, I'm going to go over to parameters because right now I am working with eye left open. Eye left open. And so let me just undo that. Why I just So I'm working with eye left open. I am going to create keyframes for eye left open. You can see here that if I scrub along this line, I left open varies between 0 and 1. So common convention actually would is that I left open 0 would mean fully blinked and I left open 1 means fully open. And so here it's logical for me to have two keyframes. So I'm going to go up here and hit this button add two keyforms. This just adds one keyform on each of each end of this timeline. Sometimes you need three keyforms, sometimes you need more. For now, for the eyes, we will just be using two. We will add another one later. All right, so you see I left open? I left open one is going to be our default. So this mesh should not move at all when it's at the default. So this or, or this mesh is already correct for default eye left open. So we're just going to right click. We're going to right click and make sure our value is set to 0, 0.0 on eye left open over here. And this is going to be fully blinked, right? I'm going to reappear the blink left. And I am just going to quite literally, normally you would, um, normally you would probably, let's say, uh, <laughs> normally you would probably do this in a more complex way, but again, Eggy is a very uncomplex character, so it's okay. So you can see if I take this eye left open and left clicking on the eye left open slider, between 0.0 and 1.0, you can now see that it transitions between between these two keyforms. Blink, blink. Okay, now let's do that again for eye right open. First, you have to select your eye right keyform, and you can see now eye left open is no longer green on these dots. That means that this, this thing you're working with does not have active parameters here. So we're going to go to eye right open, select here. We're going to hit add two keyforms. And once again, we're going to go to the zero zero spot and just go blink. Okay. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated. I'm going to go to eye left open here because and I am going to add another keyform. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit edit keyforms manually. 
that's the fourth box on this toolbar over here and at 0.1 i'm going to add another keyform by just clicking on it okay so you can see i've created a new keyform over here what I'm going to do over here is I'm actually going to have her open eye models disappear. So over here, you can see that the opacity is 100%. Now I'm going to switch over to the 0.0, .0 key form when it's supposed to be completely blinked. And I'm going to set the opacity to zero and hit enter. Now, if I deselect it, you can actually see, you can see right here, the opacity actually goes down to where it disappears. This is how I make my eyes blink into different texture, into different models. So we're actually going to do kind of the reverse for our eye model over here. So blink left, we're going to take that, we're going to go back to eye left open, and we're going to add two keyforms for start. You always need a keyform on either end of this sliding scale. Always, always, always. Even if your keyform doesn't actually move. If you're going to use that parameter. Now, we're going to go here and edit keyforms manually, and once again, add an active keyform over at 0 0.1 and then switch over to 0 0.1 and at this 0 0.1 i want the opacity to be zero crazy right i'm gonna go over to 1.1 and i'm also gonna have the opacity be zero so that then this blink model this blink texture is actually invisible up until she's almost done blinking there we go All right, now I'm gonna do that again, but for the right eye. All right, there we go, that's the eyes. So that's how I, that's a very simple way of making your, of adding eye blinks. Normally eyeball X and eyeball right only mean the pupil. So you can see here. My eyes. Eyeball X controls the side to side looking. And eyeball Y controls the up to down looking. I hope that actually got caught on camera. I can't tell. Now, Eggy doesn't exactly have pupils, so instead we're gonna make her whole eye. Uh, we're gonna make her whole eye shift when we do eyeball X and Y. So, so for eyeball X, I want both her open eye and her blinked eye to move according to like eyeball X. So I'm gonna take eye left and blink left which I'm going to highlight them both in this inspector by using control click. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to stick them into what's called a warped deformer. Destination part, root part, sure. Okay. And don't worry too much about destination part. I'm going to give it a name. Eyeball left. And yeah, just go with the defaults. Since this is a basic tutorial, we'll just go with the defaults. So now with this warp deformer, we can actually move them both at the same time. You can actually see, based on these black spots, what is supposedly the default setting. So for Abel X, X, this black spot goes between 1.0 and 0, 0.0, and the default is at 0, 0.0. I'm going to go ahead and add three keyforms onto this timeline. 0.0, .0 is just looking straight ahead. 
Now let's choose the negative 1.0 keyform. This is going to indicate as far to the right as she possibly can look, at least on your model. So I'm going to take this warp deformer and I'm going to move it to the right. Now you can see she looks to the right, just slightly. I don't need her to look to the right too much. Okay. And I'm going to do that the same for the 1.0 keyform. Look to the left a little bit. Cool, now can, she can look left and right. Alright, we'll go to eyeball Y. Now let's get her to look up and down. Once again, we're going to create three keyforms. 0, 0 is default. 1.0 means as down as she can possibly look. There you go. And 1.0 is as up as she can possibly look. There we go. You can move the meshes themselves. Um, I'm using a warp deformer so that then I can encompass both the blink left and the eye left so that then I don't have to move them separately. Okay, now let me show you a trick. If you hit this link on eyeball X, it links with the parameter below it. So now you can see she looks left and right and up and down but if I want to make her look diagonal right it it's kind of weird it's it doesn't quite fit right this definitely doesn't fit that's because the corners of this grid aren't actually filled in with keyforms the easiest thing to do is to go into this menu three lines go down to Synthesize corners and hit OK and synthesize those corners. Wow, look at that. Now she can look correctly. We're going to unlink that. And now I'm going to do this again with the other eyeball. Alright, now you can see when I move this parameter, her eyes move together. So I'm going to take this eyebrow and I'm actually going to do some magic to make it fit with it, anything else. So you can see here I'm just moving the eyebrow itself instead of as a mesh, instead of having to put it inside a deformer. Okay. This way, the eyes and the eyebrow don't collide when she looks up. On to the mouth. For this next part, we're going to go over to mouth, and we have mouth form and mouth open. Mouth open is a little bit easier to understand. Um, um. It's basically how open your mouth is. Next though is mouth form. Mouth form is a little bit more difficult to understand. It's a little bit like how wide your mouth is. So for example, if you make the aww sound, your mouth form is going to be more narrow than if you make the ah sound. For now, let's not worry about mouth form and only focus on mouth open. So here in the top lip, this is the next super useful tool I'm going to show you. This is called the deform path. So what we're going to do here is first we're going to select, select our top lip and mouth open. And we're going to create two keyforms. It goes from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So basically fully closed to fully open. What we have here is our 0.0, .0 fully closed. I'm going to switch over to the 1.1 fully open. And 
We are now going to make her mouth open using the deform path. So up here in the toolbar, the last set of three buttons, choose the first one, deform path edit. And we are going to draw a, basically a path through the exact center of her mouth. So I've set my start point and my end point. I'm gonna bring them a little bit closer to her mouth. Create a point in the middle and I'm gonna bring that point over here. There we go. So this is the deformed path. Now we're gonna actually get that deformed path to move her mouth. We're gonna choose the mouse button over here, the arrow tool, located in the second to last triplet of buttons. This arrow path over here. And if I'm thinking about fully open, let's try let's start moving this. All right. Let's start moving this up. I'm just going to finagle this over to what I think makes sense for her mouth open to look like. Now I think I need a little bit minutia in moving her mouth. So I'm just going to add two more deform points so that then I can move it a little bit more. A little bit more detailed like. There you go. Now you can see, blah, 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 blah. Now we're gonna do that for a bottom lip. Do it, but faster. I would say the deform path is probably like, if not the most, then the second most crucial to know. There you go. All right. That's mouth open. So I've created two keyforms on mouth open. Uh, when it gets small, curve it around, hide it behind her mouth. Wow. Let's see if that works. An angle X ang and angle Y and angle Z. So normally this angle X is basically, as you can see, it's basically your head turning left to right. Angle Y is your head looking up and turning up and down. And angle Z is rotating your head from side to side. There you go. So let's give Eggy an angle X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna choose every so I'm gonna choose everything that is in her face. You can see I've selected everything in her face by just doing a shift click. And I am going to, well, I would select the eyeball right, warp deformer, eyeball left, warp deformer, eyebrow, top lip, bottom lip, top lip skin, bottom lip skin, inner mouth. And those are the things. And I am going to create a warp deformer. And I am going to name that warp deformer face XY. All right. Now, as you can imagine, we're going to be doing angle X and angle Y now. So angle X, uh, we're going to go through this real fast. So angle X, three parameters, varies between negative 30, 30, and zero. Zero is default. Usually that is just staring straight at the camera. Not for Eggie though. Uh, we're going to do angle X, negative 30. That is the most far left she can look. Now we're going to make her look to the left as much as we can. That is just... Hello, hello, please close your mouth. It's rude to talk with your mouth open. <laughs> That's not how it works. All right, so usually what I do is I just take these two top points and based on rules of perspective, bring them in again, bring them out, bring them lower a bit. Then take this green point in the center. You might have to zoom in if you can't click it very well. Just move it over a bit. And also take her old face and make, make the whole face move over a bit. Wow. 
And then because the eye gets a little bit weirdly stretched like this, I'm just gonna use these green bars to minutely work with it a bit. Let's go ahead, minutely work with it a bit. I'm just gonna squash this part of it. All right, <laughs> that looks about right. Now I'm gonna have her look left. And then adjust it using the green bars as I go. You can even go more detailed. For example, if you go into edit level, I'm currently on edit level two. This is usually the edit level you'll be good with. Um, you can also go to edit level one and you can edit it even more minutely. But usually edit level 2 is going to do you fine. Alright, that looks good for angle X and then Y. Now let's go to angle Y. Default position is looking straight at you. One, as you can imagine, uh, going on to 30.0. You're going to be looking up, the most up you can possibly look. I'm just gonna have her look up like this, but then also, once again, egg. All right, that looks good. Once again, just like we did with the eyes, we're gonna link these two, select it, Notice that it's doing weird things at the corner. And hit synthesize. Corner, so then it stops doing weird things at the corners. And then just check that it looks all right to me. Okay, we're at the point where we can actually just give it a little bit of a test drive by hitting this play button in the corner. She is looking mighty fine. Or at least she is looking egg y. <laughs> Alright, well, let's just stop that and reset all our parameters. Three horizontal lines, reset to default values. Alright, now to give it a little bit of extra pizzazz, I am actually going to take the base and once again give that a warp deformer. I'm going to call it base XY because I want the base to move a bit when she looks in the angle X, angle Y too. Just not as much as the face did. So uh, I'm going to do this again, do this real fast. No commentary time. That looks pretty decent. And I'm gonna give it one more deformer. A rotation deformer. And Z, Z, straight. So you can see that rotation is this. This is rotation. Now I am going to hit control click and I'm going to click this over to where I would rather the angle of rotation to start over here. Yeah. And once again, I'm going to go to angle Z and I'm going to set three keyforms naturally at negative 30. For, I'm going to see how much I think she should be able to rotate forward. And this much looks about right. So I'm going to read on here. Apparently that is a negative 6.9 degree angle. I'm going to just hit, I'm going to just round that one to negative seven. And then I'm going to go back over to positive 30 and I'm going to set the angle as seven. 
Wow. Look at that. Amazing. <laughs> now we have the angle Z. The last parameter and it's going to be breathing. So I'm going to take face XY and base XY just because both of these encompass everything else here. Usually I find it a little bit wonky when you're working um, directly only on a rotation deformer. We'll create one more word deformer. We're going to name that breathing. Create that. All right. This thing, we're going to go to breathing. Zero means, I guess, you release breath. One means you are full of breath. It doesn't really matter that much because we're just going to be oscillating between them. So create two keyforms. And I'll say one is full of breath, right? Just and take her and make her slightly bigger. Just slight pudge. Go up. Go up. Take this also, go slightly up. Now let's see how it looks like. A little bit of pulsating sensation. <laughs> you can see now, Eggy is breathing. So I've dropped the sci the image files that I worked with. I've dropped the PSD files into the description of this video if you would like to try for yourself animating Eggy. As you can see, she is she's alive so i've exported eggy and loaded her model up into VTube studio so here i am the real life eggy wow as you can see blinking works and so does looking left and right and up and down wow I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. If you have any concepts about Live 2D that you would like for me to make a tutorial on in the future, please comment down below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and if you want to support me. Well, um, I guess that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.